Hello, I'm Stuart McIntyre, I'm Chairman of North East Scotland Archaeological Research Society. This can be a bit of a whist stop tour of a number of our sites which we've been involved in over the last five years. We're a fairly small group, about 30 people, and we're basically interested in looking at what archaeological sites of, within the Aberdeenshire area and the wider northeast of Scotland. Few of us have professional um, qualifications, but most of us are just volunteers and amateurs. We've worked locally, and we also work much further afield. We've directly assisted with a number of archaeological projects across Aberdeenshire, and this is the, what this presentation is about. I'm going to give three as a whistle top stop examples. So. Bruce Murray, sorry, Bruce Cook um, from Rampart Scotland has been very supportive of our group, and he made this comment to me in the pub one day to wind me up to get us to do much more work to get out there and actually get our hands dirty and actually help deliver some of the archaeological research. There's large areas of Aberdeenshire that's not been surveyed, not formally. It's been lots of little bits, but not big areas. This presentation, as I said, was covering three of these sites. Hillhead. Hillhead's about 30 miles west of Aberdeen, placed near Tarland. David Connolly of David Connolly Consulting helped us as a professional archaeologist with support from Bruce Mann from, as the county archaeologist. And it was offered to us as a site for NISA to actually have a go at it on our own. It's commercial woodland that's been felled, so wide open space, but it's been commercial woodland for around about 150 years. Now, between 2000 and 13, 2016, the group did a number of field walks, walkover surveys, and we discovered a, a number of circular features within the landscape, one of which we took much more interest in and we aimed at actually excavating as a group, again with David supporting us. Before we can do an excavation, further work needed to be done, so we did a full topographic survey starting with a plain table survey, then using a total station or EDM unit, we did a full topographic survey. That one there is around about 400 data points to give us an actual land, lay of the land in detail. In 2014, we aimed to actually excavate it and you can see here in red the trench we decided to put across it with David's support. And here's a picture of this. That there is the top there. So this is a trench going downhill. There's an aerial photography from Kite, using the Kite to take pictures. And this is looking from the downhill up, and you can see it is a hut circle, and it's got terracing, which was something we weren't expecting. Again, a bit more of a detailed photograph of people actually digging the site, and these are NISA members. Volunteers, they're not professionals, but we have support to actually help us and, and allow us to do it. What did the excavation find? Well, it was a hut circle, it has a revetment and terracing. We found a quantity of ceramic shards, liths, and it's been dated to late Bronze Age. And this was confirmed by C14 dates to be 850 BC from charcoal, which we recovered directly on the final occupation layer. Second site, Bobethan, near Kintor, which is around about 10, 15 miles northwest of Aberdeen. This time with Murray Cook from Rampart Scotland and David Connolly in support. 
This is very much Murray's site with support from NISA. He runs a field school there over the last three or four years, which we as NISA have come along and assisted as locals. It was spurred from a housing estate being built at Kintor, where while they were doing the pre-work, the archaeological pre-work, before the houses were built, 50 roundhouses were found. And as Murray has said, it's one of the largest assemblages found in Scotland. We then took Bob Bethany's commercial woodland that selected to contrast what we'd found at Kintour with pristine eye not ploughed out by modern farming. And this is why we chose Belbethan Woods, which is around about two or three miles outside Kintour. Belbethan Woods has been surveyed around about four times, but with different data, so there was lots of con confusion of what was actually on the site. So the primary aim was to align it and get a proper da data set that was, we could trust. In 2014, we surveyed the hut circles with David Connolly. And in 2015, we looked at other cairns and unknown features. I'm going to say here now, there's one unknown feature which I'll be showing in a few minutes, which is, was always referred to as a large circular feature of unknown origin. Because we hadn't got a clue what it was, but it was big and interesting. This is an example of the data taken from the survey put back into the county archaeologists, that's Bruce Mann's, GIS system. So we're feeding data into the county archaeologist. And here's an example of the different hut circles which were found in the Belbethan Woods, which we surveyed in 2014. This is a couple of our members. I mentioned this big, large, circular feature, which we hadn't got a clue what it was. Murray hadn't got a clue, David hadn't got a clue, none of us had a clue, just we knew we had something in the wood that was very, very interesting. We did a full topographic survey again, about a thousand data points it took us to do this. And if you look, hopefully you can see it on the side, there's a lot of contour lines just there. So this is downhill slope. And this is where we put a trench in, in 2015, down, looking down into the slope, and what we've discovered is a very large cairn. We're talking around about 25 to 30 metres in perimeter. Very large and very interesting. This is a, a photograph of one of the hut circles which we excavated with two trenches. And you can see the outer wall, and you can see a lot of the floors covered in stones. One, when people were using these hut circles, obviously they were treading on it, and the ground would actually wear away, so they started to put stones on top, like, almost like a cobbling. So you get a mass of stones, and we see this on a number of the sites. This is a picture of one of the ca burial cairns. That picture there with like two fissures, I'll come back to and talk about in a few minutes. Again, close picture of it. What we found, polished stones, lithics, lots and lots of lithics, that's flint shards. Lovely flint arrowhead, one of our members found, and it's actually slightly broken, so you can just see she's holding it in a lap. That was found in one of the hut circles. And this here is a number of flint cores. Again, I'll come back to this one, it's very interesting. Right, let's come back to this one with flint cores. This was a pit which was dug about seven, ten metres out from the centre of one of the hut circles. And we found a small burial cairn with charcoal, which we've dated, but if you look here, these are the flint cores, and they're almost like potatoes cut in half, and they were actually placed, they look almost as if they're placed. We assume they're in the same context as the burial cairn. We can't prove it, but we'd like to believe it is. 
but it's almost as if they've been placed. It's not been by accident. They've done a hoarding. They've actually placed these almost like a potato with its flat side down on the ground. Mention this fissure in one of the cairns. This gap here, you can actually put your hand and your arm all the way down to there and there's stuff deposited in the bottom of the fissure. Pottery, charcoal, again given us dating. And it's given us Middle Bronze Age. So what have we learned from Belbethan? Well, the circular structures appear to have two phases. A main phase and then a more ethereal phase which we didn't see at Kintor. So it's given us some contrasting information from the hut circles that were done as part of the housing estate archaeological research and the pristine conditions of that at Belbethan. Middle Bronze Age and date, as I mentioned, hut circles, ring cairns, an enclosure with a broken standing stone. We can only say we assume it was a standing stone because it had been ploughed out by the Forest Commission ploughs and was laying flat, but it wasn't obvious on the ground. So only when we dug the site that we actually found it, and it was quite a sizable standing stone. But the rest of it was just like a ring. And this large circular feature, which I said is a very, very large cairn of we've never seen before. Rich landscape. There's so much out there which we just do not know, we haven't yet found. But what it is saying, these small pockets of forests are giving us an inkling of what is in the landscape which has been ploughed out by the modern large farming in Aberdeenshire. A new site in 2016, it's near Huntley, Murray Cook and David Connolly, again helping, it's there, it's Murray Cook's site, David's acting sort of as additional support from surveying point of view. It's commercial woodland. It was reported by local people. People in Huntley had mentioned it to Colin, which is a, one of the Baileys of Benahy, and he in turn got in touch with Murray Cook. Murray then got in touch with Bruce Mann, the county archaeologist, and got Nisa involved to help as well, potentially in helping with the surveying. Work started in 2016. We excavated the, hunt, the hut circle to start with, what we perceive to be a hut circle. This is after the undergrowth was cleared. There's us running the trench in, confirming it is definitely a hut circle. And there's a bit more detail again, like I showed you on Belbethan and Hillhead. Lots and lots of stones laid on the ground within the hut circle, which is obviously a flooring. So it's not just dirt, they actually do produce this form of flooring in these Iron Age, Neolithic, Iron Age and Bronze Age hut circles. We confirm the presence and it's on top of a Neolithic cairn, which is interesting. This is, again, every time we go into these landscapes, we always seem to find more than we're expecting. We found a very large enclosure. I'm not, not sure it's an enclosure myself yet. I like to refer to it as a large circular feature, again, of unknown origin. It's got banks and it's got terraces. We put a number of test trenches in this year just to get an idea this is the top of the bank and it drops down around about 10 metres. <coughs> this is a side picture of the trench and this is a trench at the bottom. Again, just trying to give us some idea for the next four or five years what we need to look at. So it's just a test to give us an idea how to set our research questions for this particular site. So it's very early days. Still early days. Murray Cook, David and ourselves are planning to come back in 2007 and as I said we're already looking at potentially a four to six year project to actually do it all. There's a lot there and we have only just barely scraped the surface. In summary then, 
What do all of these three sites in, have in common? We're lucky that they're still there. They're not in the farmland, so they've not been ploughed out over the last 200 years of heavy ploughing. So they've given us a glimpse, of, almost a window, of what may be in the wider Aberdeenshire North East Scotland landscape. Only a glimpse, because we can only guess from these sites. We can't actually prove. But when we do get to sites like Kintal with rescue archaeology, because the new housing estates or the peripheral road, it gives us something we can have a, a more detailed look at alongside what may have already been damaged by modern our, our agriculture. I'd like to thank Murray Cook, David Connolly and Bruce Mann. They've been really supportive of our group. We're a fairly new group. We've only got about 30 members, but we are achieving, we, we think, quite a lot. But there's so much more we could do. Thank you. <laughs>